Hi everyone, we want to talk about water conservation. It's important for everyone, but especially important for campers and travelers. And we want to show you some of the ways that we conserve water while we're dry camping or boondocking, as you might call it. Let us know in the comments if there's some of them that you do already. So why do we care so much about water? When we're boondocking, we have a limited amount of water before we have to go and refill our tanks and empty our tanks. We don't want to spend our precious time having to pack everything up, driving to a dump station, doing all the dumping, and then coming back and having to set up again. So we try to maximize how long we can stay out by conserving as much water as possible. Did you know that the average person consumes 335 liters or 88 gallons of water per day in Canada? That is over 67 times the amount that people in areas with less water use, where they use like five gallons a day per person. Now, we aren't here to give you a lecture about why you should care about water conservation if you live in a water-rich zone. Certainly, an abundance of fresh water in Canada isn't going to help a drought in, say, Africa. It's just not that portable. However, as population grows around the world, as people move around, the demand for fresh water is definitely increasing and eventually is going to become scarce everywhere. So conserve water. Do your best not to put stress on a water scarce area when you're traveling. And this concludes the lecture we said we weren't going to give you. When we're boondocking, we only have 208 liters or 55 gallons of water in our fresh water tank. And more importantly, we only have capacity for 113 liters or 30 gallons in our gray tanks where wastewater goes. So that's water from things like showering or doing dishes. Some wastewater also ends up in our black water tank that's also 30 gallons. That's where the water from our toilet ends up. Conserving water while on the road makes a lot of sense, but we also just like to make a challenge out of it and see how long we can go before we have to fill up again. We can go a week easily, which is only about four gallons a day each, and we can even stretch it out to 10 to 14 days if we really, really conserve. So one of the most obvious places that you can start by saving water is in the shower. The shower head that we have, we switched out from the standard RV shower head and put in this Oxygenix Fury. It increases the water pressure so we can actually rinse off in a decent amount of time. And it has this wonderful little flow adjuster switch on it, which means we can reduce the flow when we're not rinsing off and when we need to soap up or increase the water flow to rinse off quickly. And one really good water saving tip we got from my brother who traveled in a van long term and had to use a lot less water than even what we do in the trailer is to take the water that's running when you're trying to warm up your shower and put it in this little dish bin here and use it for dishes later on. And on the topic of showers, we basically do military style showers where we keep them really short and we reduce the flow when we're soaping up and only turn on the water when we need to rinse off. We don't shower every day and we don't wash our hair every time that we shower. Some sources actually even suggest that washing your hair every day is not good for your hair or scalp. Yeah, I pretty much only wash my hair about twice a week. It did take a little while for my scalp to get used to that, but now I can easily go many days without my hair looking greasy. And then one last way that we save water and cut our shower time down quite a lot is by using electric razors and epilators for hair removal. Another way that we conserve water in the bathroom anyways is here at the sink and we try to only turn on the water when we're rinsing and we also try not to turn it on full blast. Yeah, we obviously don't do the let the water keep running while brushing your teeth thing. You do things a little bit differently when every drop is precious. And I tend to use a face cloth to wash my face instead of just the splash water on my face method. That saves some water too. So one thing we do in the kitchen is we make sure to really wipe all the dishes off really well into the trash. And that saves a lot on pre-rinsing and also makes it that we don't need to use as much water to rinse out the sink afterwards. 
We also found this great dish soap spray concentrate, which you can just spray directly on the dishes. You don't even have to fill the sink. So that saves a lot of water too. Also, any kettle water that's left over gets used for the dishes. And we try to avoid boiling our food whenever possible. Unless, of course, that water can be recycled for dishwater. So, which is the case for our favorite Indian pouches of curry that uh, we just boil the pouch and so the water is still clean. It's not full of food. We can just dump that into the sink and use it. Okay, so we aren't doing laundry in our rig. That just uses a lot of water. So we haven't counted it towards our 55 gallons for a week. However, when we do go to a laundry mat, we try to go only once a week and we use the largest machines possible, split everything into two loads, one hot, one cold, and that just saves time, money, and water, of course. For drinking water, we carry five gallon and seven gallon jugs. Now we could rely on our trailer water system for drinking water, but we don't like to do that because then you have to be very picky about your water source. So this way we can fill these jugs from a nice, beautiful drinking water source and our trailer we can fill from wherever. As long as the water is potable, it's all good. So these jugs live in the back of our truck and then we refill water bottles and a smaller jug that sits on our counter in the trailer. But one of the main limitations in our boondocking water usage is our gray tank. So for that, we have what's called a wastewater tote. And what this does is allow us to empty our gray tanks into this and then take this somewhere else. All right, I'm standing back. To be honest, we haven't used this wastewater tote that much yet. However, just like our generator, it's something that we feel more comfortable having along with us in case we need it, rather than just not having it at all. And we think as we start exploring some places further from home, like in our Mexico series, we might find some spots where we do actually have to use it. Traveling with limited water can be a bit of a challenge, but we've managed to find some ways to help reduce our usage. We hope that we've given you some ideas as well to reduce your water consumption, both while you're traveling and maybe even at home. And how many of these things did you already do? Plus, we'd really like to hear of any other water saving tips you might have. So be sure to let us know in the comments. Boom. Done. Mic drop. We're still rolling our way. Hi everyone. Oh, there's my mug. Should that still be in here? Nope. That's still, in, still the in the shot. We don't shower every day and we don't... Wait, keep rolling. When we're boondocking, we want to make sure that we have something and something else and and see how long we can go before we have to fill up again. That's about a week. <laughs> <laughs> is that Benny? Oh, my mic's not on. Oh, it is on. Okay. Ready? Okay. Driving to a stan uh, station? <laughs> what was the first part? I don't oh, know. It's not okay. my line. <laughs> You don't even have to fill the wall. Keep rolling. That's it. <laughs> but we also like to see how long we can go without. No, that's not right. I forgot what I was going to say. Make sure you don't miss the next video by liking, subscribing, and turning on notifications. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you in the next one.